Hello, hello, my people. Uh, welcome to this episode of the OCD's Disability Africa Show. I'm your host, Maureen Kaveke, and with me today is where do I start? Is Martin Kilavi. We are going to say hello to us. Then after that, I will introduce our special guest to you. Over wow, to you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maureen, for having us uh, once again. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, our viewers. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, depending on where you're watching us from. Mm -hmm. We are happy to be here once again and uh, to, to, to discuss more about uh, disability. You've always uh, been uh, a great support system to the show, and uh, I urge you to keep doing this. Let's keep doing this and learning mm -hmm. from our guests every, every, every new week. Asanteni Sada. Yes, yeah, and, and uh, Martin, yeah, it's so uh, uh, we have some good news that we are almost hitting 1,000 subscriptions. Wow, yes, oh. wow that's we awesome! We need to spread awesome. the gospel. That's great. Wow. That's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> so, let's keep on watching the shows, let's keep yes. on spreading and you know, sharing to our various social platforms. Yes, mm. because as we always say, we want to change even if it's just one, one life. life. Just that one life, just yeah? one life. We need to put a smile on someone's face, yeah? <laughs> okay, yeah, so today we have um, uh, this beautiful lady. All the way from the United States of America. The United States, States of America. <laughs> She's a Kenyan based in California. Mm -hmm. She's loaded with so much information. Right now, she's doing a research on cognitive diversity in education. Uh -huh. And her research is based in Kenya. Oh, yes. my goodness. We yes. can't wait to hear. Yes. 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 So, she's Jeanette Wagboy. Wagboy. Uh -huh. yes. So, uh, welcome uh, to our thank show. You. Thanks it's such an lot. honor. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Please introduce thank yourself. Thank you so much. First of all, let me say congratulations are in order. A thousand subscribers. That's <laughs> just <You're> amazing. Almost <laughs> Not almost there. There's more. Oh, Greater things you. are yet to come. But that's yes. a milestone. And yes. we thank you. For thank it. you. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really glad to be here. And thanks for having me here. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't met most of the subscribers and your followers, but I can't wait to be able to interact with them yes. in the future. And mm -hmm. as Maureen says, my name is Juniette. Waboy Kanga, and I am based in California, but I am Kenyan, and I grew up here in Kenya, and I am happy to also be back doing my research here in Kenya. Well, yeah, welcome back. Thank you. After how many years staying in the California? Um, I've lived in the U.S. for nineteen years almost. Wow. Um, but of course, I usually come home. But usually, it's coming home to visit and. To uh -huh. hang out with Shosho, Wuka, uh -huh. Uhu, uh -huh. as you can see, many languages in our family. <laughs> but um, I haven't ever come where I'm saying I want to do something to make a change where uh -huh. I grew up. Wow. So this yeah. is the first time you're doing this? This is the first time. Wow. Yeah. This is so nice. Uh -huh. Welcome, welcome. Thank Karim you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Karim, mm -hmm. um, I, I know that uh, you, I listened to you yesterday. We were together yesterday. Yeah. And... Uh, I know Maureen is anxious. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, whispered to her, I whispered to her about, uh, the, is it twice, twice what? Twice, twice exceptional mm. is the area of my research. Take it away. Take yes, it away. yes, yes, yes. Um, so I am currently at a school, as Maureen says, that is called Bridges mm -hmm. School of Cognitive Diversity in Education. It's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a new graduate school that was started because of a unique population of children mm -hmm. that falls under special needs, mm -hmm. that falls under different um, labels, mm -hmm. and they're called twice exceptional in the US. We don't exactly have a terminology here in Kenya, yes. mm -hmm. but that's what I'm going to be describing some more about um, yes. and what we'll be talking about. Yes. Yeah, but generally, I think we're, we just want change, right? Neurodiversity mm -hmm. is the new thing that we, the new word, it's always been there, but the new terminology that we're using that um begins to let us think about all brains are different everywhere and i think that's the first thing yeah. okay. that we are cognitively diverse that your brain is different from right here just the yeah. three of us yes. is three different brains yes right mm -hmm. and that means that we are diverse right here we mm -hmm. are cognitively diverse all right now yeah. uh Jeanette, who is twice exceptional mm -hmm. What is twice exceptional? Okay. I, I'm, I'm sure our viewers are asking themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. And maybe I can yes. add another question. So yes, she please, please. Both. Yes. yes. And what are the characteristics Exa of twice exceptional? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, let's mm -hmm. start with just who's twice exceptional. Mm -hmm. So twice exceptional, when you think about the word exceptional, it means that um, there's a, you know, the bell curve that we kind of learned as we were growing up. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are on different ends of the bell curve mm -hmm. and people who are in the average, right? Mm -hmm. And twice exceptional means that you're, 
falling in one exception or the other of, mm -hmm. say, a bell curve of what people consider to be regular. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there are people who are really, you know, in class, there are those who are always number one, they're always up there with mm -hmm. A, A's, mm -hmm. A pluses, and then those maybe who had E's. And that's such a really good example, but it's just showing that the bell curve, curve mm -hmm. is a distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're twice exceptional, you're living in two different worlds, basically, because you're both things at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can't be told that you're average. You're just both things at the same time. Extreme. And, yeah. Okay. And I wouldn't say extreme. It's just mm. different. That's it. And in mm. fact, I have a nice little illustration here. Mm. We hope it works. <laughs> Bear with us if no, it doesn't. Of My dear Nairobi, the dear Nairobi had to do if it will work. This is Zoom on this. Zoom on this because whatever is ab about to happen, I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay so this is to help us to so this is to help you to understand the existence of trace exceptional so oh, a trace exceptional okay. child mm -hmm. is one who um has really high abilities is considered to be gifted in america they use the word gifted mm -hmm. um but somebody who's got high abilities it could be in one domain mm -hmm. or multiple domains it could be across the domains mm -hmm. and a child or and also has a learning disability so they could okay. be having um ADHD or autism or dyslexia or emotional disorders, it could be anything and they have both and are living in both worlds. Um, when we talk about high achievement, it could be creative achievement. So it could be in the creative domains such as music and art, but it could also be in academic domains, which many people get surprised about, especially mm -hmm. as I've been going around in Kenya doing my research that there could be a child who's actually um, intellectually gifted yes. and is also having a learning disability and it just doesn't make sense and that's How is that? exactly yeah. where they're How exceptional. Is that? How is that? How is that a contradiction? That it does, it is a paradox and it is a contradiction but it is a reality and they are living that reality and um, you know you'd think that with all the advancements for example that we have in the western world yeah. um, this is a new field. This the school that I go to just started three years ago mm -hmm. and it was because um, our provost, who's kind of known as the grandmother of trace exceptionality, mm -hmm. she um, felt that she needed to raise up a group of people that mm -hmm. could begin to champion mm -hmm. these children. Because yes. even there, they're neglected. It's not just what we see in Kenya, where even the terminology isn't there in Kenya, but even in the US, there's mm -hmm. still a lot of, um, they, they get forgotten in class. And I'll explain why. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our, yay, the blue oh, box. Wow. Woo! Oh. Um, so that's a nice blue, mm -hmm. Magia Kenya. It's working well. Wow. And this is a green. Uh -huh. um, and this, in this, so I have a blue powder here and a yellow powder here. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that you are mm -hmm. um, one, mm -hmm. that you're gifted. Mm -hmm. You're you have high domains. Mm -hmm. You're yellow, and then you end up having a disability. So you're blue. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you mix the two, if you remember your art you get green. Mm -hmm. So these children live in that green world. They're living green. They are not blue, they're not, here, they're not yellow. They're not there. This is a gifted one? This is a gifted one. This is the one with a learning disability. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm gifted mathematically. Mm -hmm. I have autism. Mm -hmm. I am both things. Mm -hmm. And I'm this thing at all times. Wow. I, as I do my math, I could be able to multiply it. Mm -hmm. I could also be able to not write it and show it to you because I have issues with my hands. Um, I could have slow processing, mm -hmm. brain to hand processing mm -hmm. that I'm not able to write fast enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there are different things that hinder me. Or I could even just not be able to read or even verbally express mm -hmm. what I know. So they're able to calculate. There are, there are these children who can tell you pi up to the millionth number. Mm -hmm. But if you ask them to, um, to go upstairs and dress up, they probably couldn't. Or they yes. can't. In fact, a very common one that we discuss a lot is I can't tie my shoes. And you find mm -hmm. old children who are mm -hmm. in their teens who mm -hmm. cannot tie their shoes, but they could tell you everything about marine them. biology. I know them. You know I them. know them. Yes. I know Those them. are the ones. I know two of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm sure our audience knows more. Just I, I, know, I know. I know two of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They mm -hmm. are there. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, being able to navigate mm -hmm. the ordinary things in life becomes um, a real challenge for them. Mm -hmm. Yet um, they have this brilliant mind that they're able to explore mm -hmm. things in depth and hyper focus and be able to produce amazing things when they're on their own. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll give an example of mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this is one that I, um, that, that is a very contradictory kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So he is in class, he doesn't pay attention, mm -hmm. is not able to um, process and understand what the teacher is saying. 
and does not respond. He's always fidgeting, cannot be able to sit still, always blurting out answers, not really paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, and the teacher gets frustrated and is always sending him out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he goes home and his father lets him explore science. He loves science. Mm -hmm. So he explores this science and he builds something for a science fair and he gets a top prize, the science fair. Yeah. The teachers say that's not true. Be but yeah. you see the parents mm -hmm. have left him to do it, to mm -hmm. explore his passion. Mm -hmm. The teachers say that's not true, that's not the child we have in class because they have been used to wanting a repetitive kind of production for him, productivity, mm -hmm. and that he cannot, he wants to create and to explore science and he was able to present it. And it's a juxtaposition of yellow, and blue mm -hmm. and they are living more in the deficit world and yet they should be working on his passionate side so we'll be coming back to this quite a bit yes wow what mm -hmm. i'm getting from here martin is that uh we tend to leave them uh actually we, we don't exploit their their gifts and yes. so we exactly. leave them in the blue potential. color yes. we leave them in the blue color here. on the negative side yes mm -hmm. so like you're you're good for nothing you mm -hmm. get but do you want to say that we focus on the Call it weakness. What oh, well, we, we, we say weakness we, or we deficit. Like, we like, things we that like don't focusing seem. on mm -hmm. on the weakness, not the strength. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I, I think, love that. I, mm -hmm. I think you, Junet, mm -hmm. Junet, you want us to begin to focus on the strength. Yes. Yes. Strength, yes. Yes. Not, yes. Not, not, not the weakness. Yes. And that's why even this Perfect. cup is bigger because Perfect. I want you to remember that you need to be having more concentration on the strength. So, one mm -hmm. of the philosophies that we have um, when working with twice exceptional children is that you need to have a strength based. Mm -hmm. talent focused interest or passion driven approach yes wow. so you deal with that first mm -hmm. we're not saying ignore the fact that there's a deficit and quite quite honestly um you know you asked me about characteristics mm -hmm. it's very often that these children nobody sees the learning disability but nobody also sees their giftedness and they're just there in the middle mm -hmm. average and never that's recognized yeah, that's and that's, so they're lost some yes. people don't know them mm -hmm. they're not recognized mm -hmm. that's the most common twice exceptional child that there is. And that is what I've seen a lot in my research as I've been going around mm -hmm. to yes. different cities. Mm -hmm. um, or else maybe they'll only be recognized for their giftedness and the teacher keeps saying, but why are you in this gifted program in the US? Why are you in this gifted program yet you can't do X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. Or on the other hand, the they're recognized mm -hmm. only for their learning disability. Mm -hmm. And so they nobody's mm -hmm. um, seeing that, mm -hmm. wait, there's a gift here mm -hmm. that isn't being tapped into. It is unfortunate, Junior, that we yeah. look down upon them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mm -hmm. tend to ignore them mm -hmm. and just leave them like that. You, you get, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and Maurice, very for unfortunate the, for, for mm -hmm. the sake of, of mm -hmm. the parent watching mm -hmm. this show today, Junior, mm -hmm. you please tell us when, at what age, would you recognize this scenario in your child? Um, so a very common thing is mm -hmm. that, um I've actually, and I'll talk about this later, I've been working with a group of parents mm -hmm. here in Kenya as well. But the most common thing that you find in the literature is that they get discovered around fourth grade, fifth grade, when work is, the workload is increasing because the parent has been saying all milestones are being met. Mm -hmm. um, other times they're recognized when they're younger, um, what some of these parents found is that they were told their child is hyperlexic. How, come, how can they really be counting up to 100 when they're mm -hmm. three years old? Mm -hmm. Or like, and I'm going to bring in a personal situation and how, how I was propelled into class exceptionality is because I have a child who started reading at two years old. He was reading full books. Even now, he's probably somewhere with a book reading it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and he just loved books. The kindergarten teacher used to turn around the bookshelf so that he could pay attention. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't discover until he was in fourth, he had all the traits, by the way, they were there. But until he was in fourth grade was when he ended up being diagnosed with autism and um, inattentive ADHD. So you find that um, as a parent, you're like, why are you like this? How come you can get A's in this and why and, aren't you yeah. able to do this? Yeah. And that was constantly the battle that was there with teachers and mm -hmm. with us as parents and with relatives too. And mm -hmm. so people um, tend to think that, oh, that child is just spoiled or mm -hmm. they're just not trying. Mm -hmm. um, they're, just, they're lazy, it's yes. a very, in fact, the first person he learned the word lazy from was his teacher. Oh, no. And he came home and said, Mom, the teacher thinks I'm just lazy because oh, no. I don't like to write my weekend news. But he's correcting the teacher's spelling on the weekend news. <laughs> mm. So um, that's when I began to wonder what is wrong. I know in, he was in first grade because they had 
made him skip a grade because they thought he was bored. So it was just mm -hmm. constantly like, mm -hmm. this child is intelligent enough, let's move them along. Mm. And then he got identified for a gifted program, which thank God there are those types of programs in the US. Mm -hmm. And the person who was testing him said to me, I've never seen scores like this. Mm -hmm. they, he's just off the charts. So he got into a gifted program. But once he got into the gifted program, it was constant. He's not paying attention, he's humming, he's doing this, mm -hmm. he's not following instructions, he's reading ahead of everybody else. These are problems for teachers that you read ahead. That you read ahead. And I'm like, but he can read ahead. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> but then the problem is that we're trying to move as a pack and trying to teach to the whole class. Yes. And they are not, they don't want to be boxed. They want to, they, they're so excited as one characteristic that mm. they're so excited about content, about they're curious about mm -hmm. learning new things. Mm -hmm. And after they've learned them, they're done with that and they need the next new thing. So they constantly need to be fed with interesting things okay. or content that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So you find a child who perhaps is um, sans gifted, mm -hmm. always wants to be doing something that is exploring rocks. They might just be, you'll, mm -hmm. in fact, they'll call it an obsession. Yes. They're always picking up rocks. Where are they always doing that? The child has, has rocks in their pocket and you start to complain about it. Yet, when you look at, um, uh, there's a gentleman who, the ch gentleman who started Pokemon, which is a very big game amongst um, young kids. Mm -hmm. He used to pick up insects and his parents wondered why. And then he met Nintendo and they mm -hmm. developed Pokemon. And he used to imagine, he used to live in this imaginary world. He was, he's um, on the autism spectrum. Yes. And so you find such people who are 2E, mm -hmm. but they have, they just had a champion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I love the word champion because mm -hmm. that's what you need in every, I don't think, forget 2E, any, any place in life, whether it is living with a disability or not, mm -hmm. whether it is 2E, whether it is gift, you need a champion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we need to begin to raise up as yes. a community, yes. the champions for our next generation. That is something I feel very strongly about, that we need champions that mm -hmm. are going to be pushing our next generation yeah. into everything that they can be as Africans. Thank you. Would you, would you compare this uh, to a, to IQ, like a standard? Is there any comparison, any relation? Well, a lot of times there's a huge science behind this and it's not yet quite evolved mm -hmm. to where it should be. Um, when you're identifying twice exceptional children, the biggest thing that you should find is asynchrony. That they can read like an eighth grader, mm -hmm. act like a fifth grader, mm -hmm. has behaviors or learning some things that they're like a second grader. They have asynchrony. That's the first sign. Um, when psychologists conduct um, testing, they will do IQ tests, but the IQ test will always be discrepant. They'll never be able to get a good average to be able to say, this is your IQ number, because twice exceptional children are pulling the numbers. Yes. So they will just, either they'll be told, you'll be told the average, or we couldn't get anything, it just doesn't yes. have a really good read. That's what I hear a lot when I meet with different okay. um, people. So just so you know, yeah. I run a company called Bliss Navigator, that's an educational consultancy mm -hmm. um, in the, area that I live in and I just work with parents to help them understand their child mm -hmm. and why their child has got so much potential. I'm all about that positive psychology approach. Yeah. And so this is something I started just because I felt and the way it's called bliss and navigator is mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I want parents to feel that they have reached that place, not necessarily be blissful, mm -hmm. but be able to know how to navigate to, to get navigate. to blissful places. Ah, yes. Because mm -hmm. when you're empowered, oh. when you're educated, mm -hmm. you can make your next steps. Mm -hmm. You know what to do. If yes. we can let you know how to create your paths, how to yes. chart your paths. Because mm -hmm. at every stage, um, and hopefully one day I'll be able to write this, <laughs> I believe that at every stage of development yeah. that there is going to be a new challenge. Mm -hmm. So you go through that cycle. Mm -hmm. The cycle of what? My child is what? Denial, grief, stigma, hide it, don't ever talk about it. And then you come out and you're like, okay, let me find out some more about it. Let me, let me just find out. Oh, okay, now I'm getting it, now I'm getting it. And so what do I do? And you take action, mm -hmm. then you fall into the next stage again, mm -hmm. because now they've grown older. And you go into these cycles, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And um, for me, it feels like that is what I need, is to help parents navigate these cycles, because mm -hmm. it's a wave that you're constantly riding. It's, yeah. a it's a journey. Life is a journey with these children. Yeah. Judith, hold it there, viewers. <laughs> I hope you're following, <laughs> Judith.
and we to caution her not to wing. Eh? Okay, to remember that you're in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> <Baby does. laughs> she's trying. That's yeah. also good. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so please you're going for a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dear viewers, welcome back to our show. And before we went for the short break, yes. we were talking about Bliss Navigator. Yes. And remember, mm -hmm. Jeanette is in the house, all the way from California, just to talk to you. So please. You have to pay attention. Welcome back. Yeah, sure. Thanks yeah. so much, Maureen and Martin. So, um, as I mentioned, Bliss Navigator is an educational consultancy that I founded. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a three-pronged approach. One is I work in marketing with niche schools that are providing niche, mm -hmm. um, I would say, like unique types of solutions mm -hmm. to children that are not necessarily serviced all the time. Mm -hmm. So you could say... Um, Oshidis Foundation could be a place that I could work with from a marketing perspective. Absolutely, right? yes. Mm -hmm. absolutely, Am I committing yes. myself here? <laughs> <laughs> we love that. Um, You're already in. Yeah, okay. You're already so, in. so probably yes. I am committing myself here. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes. I love the work that you're doing, just so you both know. Yes, I do yes, really, yes, really appreciate mm -hmm. people that are coming out with a passion and mm -hmm. with, with an assertive way because mm. that is what god has called us to do yes. and that should be the basis of who we are to be able to remember everyone yeah. and know that everyone is a unique being that mm. deserves that dignity yes. yes so that's one area is that i do marketing um I, i've conducted market research for organizations and come up with like a market a strategic marketing plan for them to be able to figure out how to grow their organization yes. and most of these have been started by parents you know mm. i love that a lot of organizations, even for twice exceptional children, even for disabilities, for different kinds of needs have been started by parents because parents see the gaps and yes. they roll with yeah. it. Yes. They mm -hmm. go at That's it right. with a passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the second part is that I work individually with families mm -hmm. to be able to help them navigate, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. the different stages of life um, that they're going through with their twice exceptional children. So that is directly related to twice exceptional children. Um, and just because they tend to get left behind. I will say, living in the US um, as a Kenyan, American, whatever you want to call me, <laughs> I am a minority and mm -hmm. I'm still a minority. I'm will. i first viewed as African American, right? And so you find amongst minorities mm -hmm. that there, there, there's a squeal. I wish I had it one day to be able to show you. Maybe you can put it up on the show sometime. But then there's yes. a squeal of privilege. And the further out you get because, mm -hmm. you know, you're um uh a person of color yes you could be asian you could be african you could be whatever or and then you have a disability and then you have this you keep going further out in the wheel oh yeah mm. and so you have more it takes a longer time to be able to get to that center point and for me what i want to do is help people to get to that center point oh, oh, that's as nice. close as possible that's nice. and right. to also be recognized when they're on the outside of uh, or the periphery it is um, something that I believe we mm. should be able to do. Mm. So with Bliss, um, I am hoping to get to the point where we're able to help these twice exceptional people mm. come out mm -hmm. and be able to begin to create change, especially in Africa. I believe that they are the innovators that we need for the future. Mm -hmm. We are stuck without a lot of, we have a lot of creativity happening. Mm -hmm. We haven't had that out of the box burst. And these yes. people have that out of the box burst of innovation, if we can find them. Mm -hmm. Many of them drop out of school. Um, you'll be meeting a, a friend that I met recently mm -hmm. during my research. Yes. His name is Dr. Maina Gyoko, and he can give you stories ah, upon stories. Dr. Maina. Dr. Yes. Maina. Oh, oh. Yes. We, I think he's we, our guest we, next week. Yeah, yeah next yes. week. Yes. Next week. Yeah, yes. next week. Yes. An yes. amazing. Yes. yes. Okay. And oh, when yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so make, make sure that you do ask him those questions. Yes. But even in the US, um, there, is a, there, there is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Webb who passed, he's the late Dr. Webb, and he started mm. an organization called Social Emotional Needs for the Gifted. And it's because when you think about gifted people, people think, oh, they're privileged, they've already got it, they got this. But they have so many emotional needs and mm -hmm. they pull a lot, they border between depression and being gifted and mm -hmm. what their passions are. Mm -hmm. And um, what he was finding is as they get into college, yes. that he had someone commit suicide and he said, we need to teach parents to be able to help these children navigate it because everyone thinks you've got it. You've got it. Mm. You've got it. So it's mm -hmm. so gifted is a special need. In Kenya, it's recognized as a special need by Kise, but then it's no longer on the sector policy. 
So the sector policy now only recognizes disabilities. It doesn't recognize gifted. Mm -hmm. We are still working on a gifted policy. Okay. So now if you're this, if you're this person, mm -hmm. where, how are you being helped? Because either you're only going to be helped for your disability, because right now there's nothing, or you'll be no forgotten policy. on that one. You'll, be, you'll not even before, this will never be touched. This will never be touched. Yeah, like because right now the policy is gone. focus on, on that on, one. On yes. We don't talk about the, the gifted, gifted children. No. Oh, there's no policy. The, there's the, no policy. The, the, right, but I will say in my research, let me advocate for mm. Ministry of Education, mm. not because I'm being paid for this, but because they have said that they are doing research mm -hmm. and they actually did a whole um, needs assessment in 2022 mm -hmm. to now carve out a policy for gifted and talented. My only concern is that it doesn't involve gifted with a disability. It doesn't involve our people that are twice exceptional. Yeah. This so fellow, they're, get, so this they're getting there. Is forgotten. Yes. Totally. Yes. Yes. He's not mm -hmm. in the equation. Yeah. And so, um, well, when, when you think about it, we just need to figure out a way to chart a path for us as Africans. Mm -hmm. I have been to Nakuru, Mombasa, Kisumu, mm -hmm. and Nairobi, which is where I've been doing my research, and have had chances to talk to various teachers primarily. Mm -hmm. And it's been interesting to just see the aha moment when a teacher says, I have that student. Let me tell you about so-and-so. And that is where I was going with my next question. Yeah. Jeanette, there is a parent who is watching us right now, mm -hmm. and they have this child. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Um, they have this child. I'm yes. sure somebody is watching and saying, my, my daughter, my son is green. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing that as a parent I would say is that there are five imperative environments for a child who is green in order for them to be able to thrive. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we first want our children to thrive. Yeah. We want them to be able to be mentally mm -hmm. okay, that they believe in themselves, that they're building their self-esteem, mm -hmm. that they're having self-efficacy, mm -hmm. that they can be everything that God created them to yes. be yeah. and that destiny. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to have a good balance of these five environments. So the first one is the physical environment. Mm -hmm. um, you know that a child might never, they can't sit still. They need to be on a moving ball or a moving chair. They just can't sit still. So why are you asking them to sit still and do their homework? Um, that's just one example. There's different things in the physical mm -hmm. environment. There's the overstimulation with lights or yes. Yes. different things, just the sensory mm -hmm. and things that mm -hmm. tend to affect children of this nature. Then the second one is the intellectual environment. I told you that mm -hmm. they're really, um, especially those who are academically gifted, mm -hmm. they're looking for something new and novel and curious. Mm -hmm. To challenge. Well, so there's the content. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's content, mm -hmm. there's process, mm -hmm. and there's product. Yes. And this is the same thing to teachers. Mm -hmm. There's content. It needs to be challenging them. It needs to be pushing them. And that in, in an area of interest. Mm -hmm. In the areas uh -huh. of non-interest, mm -hmm. let, let's move that one out of the way. Yes. So you need to be doing what they call dual differentiation when you're thinking about their learning. Mm -hmm. That you're working towards um, building their strengths being able to nurture their talent, being able to give them content that stimulates their brain, but at the same time, you're also giving accommodations that help them be able to access that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because if I am in a situation where I really love stories mm -hmm. and I love history, um, there's a girl like this, mm -hmm. um, loves history, mm -hmm. loves to be able to mm -hmm. um, read stories and tell stories, but she can't write, and you want her to write what she read, you want her to write a book report, that's impossible. So how, how, how then do we change the product mm -hmm. from the content? She likes the content, mm -hmm. but she cannot be able to produce mm -hmm. to prove to you. So let's change the format of by giving her choice. Let her do videos like this. Let her go on YouTube and mm -hmm. share videos about what she's been learning because she's been learning it. You look like you have a question. Yes. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. Mm -hmm. Tell us about teaching mathematics through mm -hmm. music okay. or through history. <laughs> Please, <laughs> tell us about that. Uh, yeah, teaching. well. <laughs> tell us about mathematics I am, and teaching. I'm not by any, a teacher by no means, but um, you know, I've had the privilege of meeting with various colleagues that are using music and art as the approach to math. math. A lot of kids have math and that, just in general. Mm -hmm. That's a meme in math there are times when you see cosine sign and I'm like, I don't oh, like any problem only. Ah, no, no, no. I used to get sick. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. I noticed later on in college, yeah. uh, the university, I, thought, I, I realized math is not that hard. It's not is that it hard. Yeah. Well, yeah, mm, but yeah. we get that math mm. anxiety. And with mm. trace exceptional children, mm. anxiety is a big thing. So if they're afraid to be able to access the math, mm maybe they're good musicians mm -hmm. and there are various practitioners that have now begun to use music as the approach 
to be able to teach music and math. Music is math. At the Go end on. of the day, music mm -hmm. is math. Go it on. is about beat. And let me tell you, actually, my first encounter with a 2E child, where I did not know it was 2E, mm -hmm. I did not know this. I was in University of Nairobi, mm -hmm. and I was teaching at Castro Mana to make some money, some pocket money. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Castro Mana is an integrated mm -hmm. school that mm -hmm. brings in children with different disabilities and abilities. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching music, and I was playing piano. And this boy comes, and he's just watching me. He's close to me and I'm like, give me some personal space. <laughs> but no, he's right there next to me and he watched mm -hmm. me and he would replay everything I would play. Mm -hmm. And then he would start giving me history dates, like what happened in 1775, this and this, and in different parts of the world. And what happened in, but then he could not have a conversation with you. Later on, of course, I found, now that I know what I know, I know he's autistic. But at that point in time, I was like, how do you know all this stuff? And his mother said, I'm so sorry, Anakusumbua. And I was like, Kani Sumbui, do you know the treasure that you have here and how bright he is? Mm -hmm. And I vowed to myself at that time, I know serendipity and God, he just knows how to take you fully around. Yeah. That was back in my 20s, we're not talking about our age today, <laughs> but <laughs> we should eat. back in the days, I felt I was going to do my research, anything that I did in life was going to be around mm -hmm. disabilities, but yes. I wasn't sure. Yes. I did not realize that I was dealing with a twice exceptional child at that time. Mm -hmm. So I went full round. I, I volunteered at Jacaranda School. Mm -hmm. I volunteered at Bombolulu Workshops for the Disabled. I mm -hmm. worked at a place where they were creating prosthetic legs, and I thought, this is what I'm going to do for design. It just wasn't fitting. It had to take all these many years, God like 19 you. years. Yes. God was preparing you. Yes. And so what I want mm -hmm. to say to parents, Mm. is that God is preparing you for yeah. something. Mm. You have to be refined and refined and refined. And that fire, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. Nobody mm -hmm. is going to say it's easy. And everybody's story is their individual story. Nobody mm -hmm. has got the same story. Please don't compare. Don't compare your child with anybody. Don't mm -hmm. compare your journey with anyone. Yeah. God is the one who's refining you for your journey because that is a unique journey that he wants you to be able to make a difference yes. in. And that, that is your story. And mm. it's giving you grace for it mm -hmm. and the ability to be able to walk through, to walk that journey. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Amen. And, hey, and I like the way you're so passionate about, you know, the twice exceptional uh, concept. And even I like your choice of words. I've been listening to you, Kindy. You know, you're not talking about the negative side of this. No, no, no. Of, of, the, of this. She's yeah? on that one. Yes. All along. So that's what All you're talking through. about. Please. You're talking about twice exceptional, you're not talking about disability no, anymore. No. It's still there. And we need to acknowledge that mm -hmm. you are still blue. Yeah. You are still, but we are not but focusing so much here. But we are yes. not we are not focusing focus. on like remediating focus. everything. Yes. Yes. We're focusing on giving you something that you can believe in yes. and then teaching you how to access it. Wow. Okay? So we are scaffolding. So yes. we first of all start with how do we help you there? I told you about the five environments, yeah, physical, yes. intellectual, creative, mm -hmm. that you're giving that curiosity and ability yeah. to explore. Mm -hmm. There's the emotional. Now, with the emotional, they start mm -hmm. to see some of the disabilities starting to drain them. Mm -hmm. But you begin to create that balance. They need mm -hmm. safety first. Mm -hmm. If they don't have safety, if they don't know, I can trust where I am. Mm -hmm. I can trust not to be violated. I can trust. And then um, they can be able to be social after that. Mm -hmm. So unless you have those needs, mm -hmm balanced which you know interestingly they're kind of similar for these two types of yes. people mm -hmm. then you're not going to be able to help that child advance mm -hmm. so you need to start with that strength-based mm -hmm. talent focused approach think about their interest if they like music why are you trying to teach math as math with the repetition that it has when you could be using music as the repetition mm -hmm. right music is about repetition it's about syncopation it's about all of those things Mm -hmm. um, why are you trying to, I'll give you an example, I mentioned to you that mm -hmm. my child is twice exceptional. Mm -hmm. We've battled, 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 and he doesn't like to write, will not write a word. So last year we decided to homeschool, mm -hmm. it's been quite a journey. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason why is because I decided I'm going to go full blown into a strength based approach, mm -hmm. you know, fully knowing I have this other challenge. Yes. And so, um, so we decided to do English from an esports perspective. So he likes video gaming. Mm -hmm. Mom does not know anything about video games, but I will learn about it. I signed up for an esports program. Mm -hmm. I began to, I became a fellow, um, being coached through esports and how it works and how to form teams. I created a team. Mm -hmm. We began to work, and somehow I ended up with three other trace exceptional kids in wow. my team. Uh -huh. So now I was working with parents navigating this. And these were children who could do college classes. 
but at the same time they will have meltdown yes right yes they will steam um some were autistic some were adhd mm -hmm. some would be off the roof mm -hmm. um one was dyslexic one had emotional mm -hmm. disorders mm -hmm. but they were amazing when they when it came to the creativity of the mm -hmm. game right oh. mm -hmm. and i would so one day I told my son, okay, you need to write an expository essay. And I was thinking, this is going to be a disaster. And I said, why do we have to do MLA? He knows MLA format in his head. Yes. He's memorized it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But to now write it out, it's a problem. So I was like, okay, you're going to type one. Mm -hmm. Two, I'm going to teach you how to use tools mm -hmm. that help to be able to um, cite citation tools. But you're going to do the academic research, find the papers and read them. He read them. He read the academic papers. Is a academic papers in university that are written by, um, in publications, mm -hmm. and then wrote an expository essay to be able to prove why parents mm -hmm. should allow children to read video, to play video games. Mm -hmm. It was a 2000 word essay, written with no pain because he's passionate about what his topic was. Yes. Yeah. And no pain because I'd given a tool, I'd scaffolded it, so it was an interest topic, yes. mm -hmm. based on his strength in reading, mm -hmm. that has been scaffolded with the tools, mm -hmm. type it, um, and also use the like parlor and other reference managers. Yes. Um, and then let's keep the busy work. You don't have to draw a huge outline for me. Just put bullet points mm -hmm. and then produce it. I ended up with my 2000 essay. Wow. And a presentation that he did wow. at an eSports conference after that, which he also spoke at. He doesn't <clears> like <throat> to speak, but he spoke and presented about why he thought that this was important. Jeanette. Yeah. So it is doable. It is doable. But we have to change our concept. You know, mm -hmm. God has, this is a Bible verse that, that um, my life revolves around mm -hmm. with God children. Encourage us. Encourage it us. is Ephesians 2.10, mm -hmm. that we are God's workmanship, his masterpieces, created to do great things. That's mm -hmm. who these children are. They are his work, workmanship, mm -hmm. not just... Kaboom, there you are, there his mm. workmanship with his own hands. And I'm mm. I, I'm an artist in the background. Can I, add I did the, design. Can I, can I say detailed workmanship? Detailed workmanship. Yeah. Intricately formed in your mm. mother's womb. Mm. And for each child, every child that I have, um, and I've had, I have stories beyond this. Mm -hmm. um, even with my last child who's also in a special needs program. Mm -hmm. um, the at the end of the day i look at what is it that's making you so unique i'm mm -hmm. going to build on it and capitalize on it yes i need to take you for physical therapy occupational yes. therapy mm -hmm. blah 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 mm -hmm. and speech i'll deal with that but most of all what is it that you're good at mm -hmm. that i can build be able on. to yeah. because then i'm giving you efficacy i'm giving you self-esteem yeah. mm -hmm. i'm giving you a place to belong oh a group God. that you find your tribe you mm -hmm. find your people yes when you're in that place mm -hmm. And then you feel like I a like human being. just say, mm -hmm. you find your tribe, yeah. your people, mm -hmm. where you fit in. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you belong. And you belong. Yeah. Mm. But you know, unfortunately, Jeanette, many people are not willing to walk the journey. I don't know why many people want to give up and maybe they do not have this kind of information. And that's, that's why this program is here. Mm. To encourage other parents that, yes, yes you can, it is not, it's not going to be bliss, as you said. It is not going to be a very smooth journey. But yes, you yeah. can. You know, you know what I usually say is you can walk the journey, mm -hmm. but you'll still walk the journey. Like there's, there's no there's change. No, there's no, there's no change. No, the change is here. Yeah. 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 Okay, let me take that back mm -hmm. because I've, I've had trauma stories as I've been going doing my research okay. about mm -hmm. children who have been killed by their parents because they have a disability. You think he? Killed. killed. Yes. Yeah. And I've met grandparents who've been dumped on the children because oh. the parents could not handle it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yes, that's there are those women who, that, mm -hmm. so not women, but parents who totally abandon. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's also a mental state. And I feel like you need to take care of your mental health. You need to find up, and the counselors are not easy to go by. And we as Africans, we don't like to go to see counselors anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you're in a place where I can't see where's he, mm -hmm. please yeah. go find help. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the problem is that when you're in this state, you can't go to your family because mm -hmm. they don't understand and they don't mm -hmm. be involved. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't know who to go to. I, I'm sure you're going to find those counselors and start announcing it on the website. Yes. Yes, because we need counselors to rise up and begin to help people walk through this trauma, through the stigma, mm -hmm. to break through 
mm-hmm. the stigma. You know, we don't think about trauma. Trauma mm-hmm. is anything around us, okay. mm-hmm. and how much more is it for these children wow. and, and for the last, parents? Yeah, and actually, oh. the last show we talked about mental wellness. Yeah. We oh, that's like, awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's an area that we need to really yeah. dig into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we had a counselor um, who came through and she talked to us about this. Mm. Because actually, mental wellness in this country, especially, has yes. become a huge, yes. huge. Yes, I, th- I think it's everywhere, especially yeah. after mm-hmm. COVID. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and then of course, if you have, if you suspect that you have a child, you mm-hmm. need to be able to get them assessed. Mm-hmm. Assessment is there's a whole barrage of tests that people do. Yeah, and um, mm-hmm. I can always talk some more about it. Somebody can contact me because it's that's yes. a whole topic on its own. Yes, look at that camera. Yes, and tell them mm-hmm. to contact me. To contact. <laughs> <laughs> So almost like yes, it. yes, please do contact me. If you suspect that you have this child who's living the green life, mm-hmm. please do contact me. I'm available in many different ways. I'm looking at ways in which to bring costs down, but there are also conversations that we can have where we can determine the best direction to go. Mm-hmm. Again, my name is Juniette Kanga, and my email is bliss, B-L-I-S-S, navigator, LLC, at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, before we go, Jeanette, um, mm-hmm. you've been going through our different counties doing your research mm-hmm. yes. on the same. Mm. You've been living in the USA. Yes. Now you're in Kenya. Yes. And I'm sure you've come across these stories and these scenarios and, you know, the real life mm. experiences. Mm. What do you think we can do as a country as we wind up? Wow. <laughs> change this. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Um, I, I was asked, I've been asked multiple times why I decided to do my research mm-hmm. here versus mm-hmm. live my happy life and just mm-hmm. do it in mm-hmm. the Bay, Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. Bay Area. Yeah. That's easier. Yeah. Um, you know, we, I've, I, met, I met friends who had to eat children and they didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, these are my peers. Some of them are doing well. Others are struggling, but mm-hmm. they have this child. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so I think as a country, mm-hmm. um, it's got to start from an educational perspective because mm-hmm. because people mm-hmm. um, hold teachers in reverence in a certain way. Mm-hmm. But as parents, as parents, we can do a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're a parent here and you're watching, you you just never know how your story is going to begin to change other people's lives. That's mm-hmm. a first thing. So the change begins with the parents. It needs to. I, I would say it begins with okay. parents and teachers. Okay. Okay. But it's but parents need to come out and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say mm-hmm. because you know when I was having running this, I, start, I started a sang. I'm a sang trained facilitator, mm-hmm. and I was running as the first sang group in Africa mm-hmm. um, since April till June. It's a ten week program, mm-hmm. and the first thing that the parents said is, "We don't want to call our child gifted because people think you're just boasting or something." Yeah, yeah. Or, I wish I had your problems mm-hmm. or the kinds of things that they're hearing, mm-hmm. and we also don't want to talk about them being disabled because. They don't seem to be having the like, severe disabilities mm-hmm. that some other people are going through. Mm-hmm. So they just shy away and they keep quiet. Mm. They didn't realize that, you know, there's a terminology for it and that they can start to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And so it was their first time to talk to each other mm-hmm. and they felt such relief. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm going to be meeting some of them and doing some assessments for some of their children mm-hmm. to be able to provide an educational report for the school. Mm-hmm. So, it, so parents need to talk some more, to come out and say, mm-hmm. I think I have this green child. Okay. And... It's not a bad thing for them to be gifted. It's not a bad thing for them to have a disability. Yeah. It is who they are, mm-hmm. and that is who they have been created to be. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Nothing. Any parting shot? I take shot for the day. My parents, my friends. Mm-hmm. Today we got to know about green. I know that uh, some of us have children who are green. The solution it is doable. Doctor Kanga is here. She has doctor, talked doc- the future. Today, today. By next year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Speak it. And so Dr. Kanga is here. You can contact her if you think your child is green. And uh, once again, I say it's doable. Mm. Um, today, I want time to process what she just taught us. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. to the show. Thank you. And mm. uh, when you go back to California, our regards, as how she does disability Africa. Mm-hmm. And uh, you are most welcome to come back, and we have more conversation on the Absolutely, yeah. Yes. Just keep doing what you're doing. You guys are amazing, Asante. amazing. Asante, Asante, yeah. Asante. Yeah. Asante. Yeah. Asante. Yeah. Asante. So you introduce the show to to your neighbors, to your friends in California. Absolutely, to watch, to follow us. Yes, so yes. Then we can, you know, have more ideas, and now we can make a change. Yeah, That's true. yes, and we need more in the community. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're part of us now. 
Yes. Let's do this together. Just like that. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> yes. 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 And we need to, we need to live that just like that life. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Like it. That we just yes. do it. Make that make that step. Whatever yes. step you know in your heart you must do just like that. Do it. Yeah. Asante. Mm. Oh. Asante sana. And all the best in your research. Thank who you. Knows? Who knows? We could attend your graduation. Yes, Training. please. <laughs> <laughs> you must be a party. Yeah, but two. Yeah, two. Yeah, but two. Yeah, but two. Yeah, but two. Yeah, so, Vios, thank you for taking your time to watch your shows. And we hope that you've learned a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm. And Jumetas told us that uh, she's, she, she's, she's loaded with so much information. I'm sure we've learned. I mean, personally, I have learned. And I am sure that you've learned something. That, yes, it is a journey. Yes, it's not going to be very easy, but yeah. yes, it is doable. Mm. We are not going to focus on that color. The blue, mm. you know, the disability, no. We're not going to focus we'll on that. We'll acknowledge it. We're not yes. going to throw it away. We'll we acknowledge, acknowledge it. it. Yes, acknowledge it. But, but no. we are going to spend some time here. Yeah, on the gift. Yes. Yes. Mm. All the possibilities. Yes, on, on the possibilities. a better person, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See you next week for more of our stories. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.